Hello everyone, this is Professor May Joan Aguila, and I will be discussing Slater's Rules in Electronic Energy. For polyelectronic systems, we have encountered that shielding and penetration of electron is very important. As such, the nuclear charge that the electron experiences in polyelectronic atom depends on two factors, and these are the magnitude of the charge of the nucleus, so how huge or how large the value Z is, and the repulsion among the electrons. Of course, if there are more electrons, you should expect that there are more repulsions. As such, for polyelectronic system, the nuclear charge that is felt by the electron is actually different from the Z value. This is why we refer to the nuclear charge as Z EFF or effective nuclear charge. And this is the actual positive charge that is felt by an electron. Now, Slater proposed a way to calculate and to measure the orbital penetration and electron screening in polyelectronic atoms. In this given formula, we have Z star or Z EFF as the effective nuclear charge. And we can see that it depends on the nuclear charge Z, which is also the atomic number, and the shielding constant. It actually has formulated several rules on estimation of the shielding constant. The first thing that we need to do is to write down the Slater's electronic configuration. So this is different from what we are used to. So in this case, we follow a certain order and groupings, and this is shown on the screen. So we group 1s, and then next would be 2s and 2p, and then 3s and 3p. Separate group would be 3d, and then so on. So in this case, still going from 1s to, say, 5s, 5p grouping, that is increasing in energy. And then you will write the number of electrons as contained in the following orbitals as a superscript beside the parentheses. Take note that any electrons at a group higher in the sequence would contribute nothing to the shielding constant. So the only electrons that you need to consider would be those electrons in the same group and those that are inner to it. Next, we need to identify if the electron is in the ns or np orbital. So for each of the electron in the same grouping, ns, np, the shielding is about 0.35. But if we're talking about 1s electron, it contributes 0.3 shielding to the other 1s electron. If the electron is in the n minus 1 shell, each of those electrons will contribute 0.85 to the shielding constant. And then lastly, for any electrons n minus 2 or even inner electrons, this will contribute 1. Now, if you have an electron of interest in the nd or nf orbital, each of the electrons in the same group, nd, nf, will contribute 0.35. But since nd and nf electrons are poor penetrators, they are very much shielded, you can see very well that all the electrons in the lower group would be contributing one each to the shielding constant. 
Now, let us try. In this problem, we are to determine the effective nuclear charge felt by the 4s electron in iron, given that iron has a z value of 26, so that means 26 electrons, and following the proper writing of electronic configuration in the ground state, we will have the electronic configuration as shown. So the first step is to write the electronic configuration according to Slater's. So we are going to group it. So we have 1s. There are two electrons there. 2s, 2p together. There are a total of eight electrons. And then 3s and then 3p. Another eight electrons. But take note, according to the Slater's configuration, you should write 3D first before 4S, and in the 3D you have 6 electrons, while in the 4S you have 2 electrons. So we are going to determine the shielding constant felt by the 4S electrons. So one of these electrons. In the same grouping, which is 0.35 contribution, you have one remaining electrons. N minus one, so that would be the 3s3p grouping plus the 3t grouping, each of which will contribute 0.85 total of 14 electrons. And then lastly, the 2s2p grouping and the 1s grouping, these are already in the n minus 2 or lower. So each of those electrons will contribute 1 and there are 10 electrons. If you do the math here, you should arrive at shielding constant 22.25. And with that, we calculate the effective nuclear charge as Z minus sigma. Z is 26. Sigma is 22.25. And we will have a value of 3.75 as the effective nuclear charge felt by the 4S electron. So I hope by this example, you realize the importance of shielding and penetration in polyelectronic system. You can see very well that the amount of effective nuclear charge felt by the 4S electron, the electron at the outer shell, is indeed very low. Okay, it's just about 3.75. Following this up, we should be able to calculate the electron energy. In polyelectronic systems, the energy of each electron can be calculated using the formula as shown on the screen. This might look very familiar. It looks very similar to the one used to calculate the energy of electron in hydrogenic systems. But instead of just simply Z and N equals 1, we are using Z star, which is the effective nuclear charge, and N star, which will take the following values according to the Slater's rule. So from N equals 1 to N equals 3, N star is just simply the same value. But as we go on to larger value of N, Four, five, six. you can see that the n value n star value is considerably lower so for 4 n star is 3.7 for 5 n star is 4.0 and for 6 n star is 4.2 and with that let us try with this problem calculate the first ionization energy of lithium given that the first ionization energy 
is the energy required to remove an electron from the gaseous lithium atom to produce gaseous lithium plus cation. The equation is shown on the screen. So lithium has an electronic configuration of 1s2 to s1 and upon ionization to produce Li plus the 2s electron is ionized and we have 1s2 for the electronic configuration of Li plus. The first IE for lithium is just simply the energy difference between the lithium plus cation and the lithium atom. For the energy of the lithium plus cation, this is just the summation of the electronic energy in the lithium plus, which would be the electronic energy of those two electrons in the 1s orbital. So using the equation from the previous slide, that would be negative 13.6 times 2 times the effective nuclear charge divided by n star squared. So this is for the 1s. Now the energy for the lithium atom can be calculated in a similar fashion so we need to add the energy for the 1s electron and the 2s electron. And as such, we have negative 13.6. There is only one electron in the 2s orbital. So multiply by the effective nuclear charge and n star squared for the 2s plus now for the 1s which is 13.6 times 2 times the effective nuclear charge divided by n star squared for the 1s. So substituting this expression to first IE equation, we will have negative 13.6 times 2 times C star over n star squared, this is for the 1s, minus the summation of the electronic energy for the electrons in the lithium atom. So we have negative 13.6 times 1 times C star over N star squared, this is for the 2s electrons, minus 13.6 times 2, C star, N star, squared, this is for the 1s electron. So we have a negative sign over here before the square bracket. So if we distribute that, we will have plus sign here. And we can see that this term is cancelled out by this term. So first IE for lithium is now simply 13.6. Take note this is already positive. Z star over N star squared for the 2S electron. So now let's calculate first for the C star for the 2S electron. This is Z minus sigma. Z is 3 minus sigma is there's no electron in the 2S aside from that one electron that we are considering. But there are two electrons in the n minus one level, which is the 1s electron, each of which is 0.85. So the effective nuclear charge will be three minus 1.7. And this will give you 1.3 as the value for the effective nuclear charge. 
So let's substitute that into the first IE expression. So plus 13.6 times 1.3. The N star is 2. So square that. And if you do the math here, you'll arrive at the answer. First IE is 5.746. The units electron volt. So the experimental value is actually very close to this one, which is 5.4 electron volt, suggesting that indeed in polyelectronic system shielding and penetration play a very huge role in the electronic energy, and we can use the Slater's rule to approximate the electronic energy for poly-electronic atoms.